morcego. Prologue. The iron face worn from years of fear, the key scrapes and carves the metal surface as it searches for the opening of the lock. The man in the rainy darkness, fearful for his life, struggles to open the clinging gate, the omnipresent unknown closing in behind him. The man's knees tremble in pain, barely able to support his weight, his face crumbles in agony. He is still recovering from his prayers. A month ago, his beloved daughter, just eight years old, went missing. He begged God to bring her back. His last resort, which has worked for others before, was to walk up the 33 stairs of the church on his knees, not once, but dozens of times. It didn't bring her back. Across the road on the other side of the largest drain canal in South America, the river Chiate, a thin stream of mustard yellow filth meanders down the side of the concrete embankment. Rainwater washes the suspicious yellow slime forward and down the incline into the swirling chemicals below. It steams and simmers on contact with a festering reddish goop. Clacking footsteps approach stepping in a fascist rhythm across the wet concrete. The lock turns. The frightened man slips inside and quietly clicks the gate behind him. Observing carefully from the shadows, he watches them pass by, their shoes marching loudly. Three white men, obviously just overconfident foreigners in the wrong part of town. Hey! Hey, wait! You don't want to go that way! That's Red Faction territory! The men ignore him and continue along their way. They'll kill you, he says, shaking his head. Down the river, a sofa cemetery in the giant canal clogs the flow of filth and begins stirring the sewage cauldron like a giant cackling witch. Crimson chunks of who knows what dislodge from the steep walls above the opposite embankment. Oozing down the concrete banks and plopping into the festering concoction one by one. A faint fuzzy noise becomes audible. Soon the sound of simmering stew begins to amplify. The sound slowly morphs into the hum of a faraway audience cheering in a stadium. Boiling acid foam slowly rises out of the canal from the toxic reaction. Towering 60 feet in the air, the wiggling foam blob heaves and folds. It starts inching down the street. The ground sizzles as the sud blob creeps over the chemical residues baked in the gutter and the road. Spires of suds peer up, wobble and fold over in a repetitive slow roll, pushing the mass forward. The frothing bubbles climb over and swallow the white vans illegally parked next to the concrete bank. The paint fizzes and boils. The mountain of moose heaves and burps. It creeps forward while the inhabitants sleep, rudely awaking people passed out in the alley with its stinky burning lather. Yelling and gunfire ring through the neighborhood, the foam blob rippling in the wind. Brazil is one of the most abundant, beautiful places on earth. Most of the country is made up of lush, tropical rainforests and white sand beaches. Paradise. But not everyone in Brazil lives in paradise. Our story begins in the east zone of Sao Paulo, one of the largest cities in the world. Overrun with crime syndicates and corrupt politicians, very little works as it should, and almost nothing's fair. The crippling weight of this world always threatens to crush you in the mold like the rest of the struggling inhabitants. 
desperately waiting for a chance for that one opportunity, even if it means a rich person might have to lose a small part of their fortune. God will place opportunity in front of you if it's your turn. You just have to recognize it and react quickly. Most choose to fight on as honestly as possible, trudging uphill in an emotionally numb apathy to a non-existent goal. For the good people, life becomes the punishment of Sisyphus.